and white, life and death, good and evil, two sides of a chess game, two forces in the universe, one magnificent, the other sinister. It is said that the devil plays for men's souls. So does Dr. Fu Manchu, Satan himself, evil incarnate. Gentlemen, this broadcast is originating at the Municipal Airport in Hong Kong. During the refueling stopover, we hope to bring to you an on-the-spot interview with one of the most important men of our time, a man who might have the answer to that dread question, is it to be war or peace? Can the East and West find a solution to their differences? Professor Hugh Yan, Special Delegate to the Conference of Nations. They're getting off the plane now, ladies and gentlemen. Professor Yan. Professor Yan, please, sir. Professor Yan, would you say a few words to a world audience? I understand, sir, that you bring with you a formula for world peace. There is no formula for world peace, except as each man abolishes fear and hatred from his own heart. I understand, Professor Yan, that you have mandates from the Eastern warlords that might make it possible to end the threat of war. Well, let's put it that I have been given the power to accept the plan being put forth by the United States, should it be all that it seems. During the last war, weren't you in a concentration camp for a long period of time? Three years. Then no one knows better than you the importance of freedom. Thank you, Professor Hugh Yan. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard an on-the-spot interview with Professor Hugh Yan. Betty Leonard, you will open your eyes. You are a laboratory technician. You are to go on duty at the municipal airport at 10 a.m. That is correct. That is correct. Professor Hugh Yan arrives on flight nine from the Orient. He is suffering from a, a rare disease and only you will be able to save his life. Do you understand? I understand. The serum you are to use will be in an ampule in your purse. Now you may close your eyes. Dress her at once for the street and see that she reaches her place of employment on time. Mr. J.P. Robinson, passenger on flight 2-1. Your plane is ready for immediate departure at gate number three. Mr. Robinson, please. All passengers for flight number 22, please report to your plane at gate number four. It is my duty to assist Sir Dennis in meeting the delegates and smoothing their clearance by customs, immigration, and health officials. I am John Petrie doctor of medicine and close friend of Sir Dennis Nayland Smith, 
breastplate of Scotland Yard and now assigned as Chief of Security for the conference. Through Sir Dennis, I am presently assigned to the Surgeon General staff. This morning, at the very last minute, Sir Dennis was called away on an important matter, and he had asked me to meet Professor Yan without him. We ran into a slight delay. The professor lacked the proper certification covering his last smallpox vaccination, one of the musts for travelers entering America. Miss Leonard, will you take the data, please? Yes, Doctor. Your name, please. Oh, I'm sorry, Betty. This is Professor Hugh Yan, my assistant, Miss Leonard. I'm very sorry about this, sir, but I'm afraid there's no choice but to go through another vaccination. Let me take your case and your coat. Thank you. I'll take your coat. Now, if you'll roll up your right sleeve, please. Miss Leonard will have it over with in just a moment. Sounds like they're coming here. Sir Dennis. Ready, Professor Yan. Wait here. Professor Yan, I'm glad you're safe. Betty! What's the idea of a hypo? This was supposed to be a routine vaccination. Send an ambulance to the lab office and hurry. Where did you get this serum? I, I don't know. Somehow I knew it was in my purse. Pulse and respiration subnormal. He's now in a coma. I'll run a test on this serum as soon as possible. Only half the stuff's inside him. There may be time. I will, sir. Why, Betty? Why? Dr. Yan is sick. He would have died if I hadn't given him that serum. Well, that's crazy. Not necessarily, Petrie. Look at her, confused, distraught. You think it might be post-hypnotic suggestion? It's possible. That important phone call I received turned out to be a wild goose chase. This must be a plot against Professor Yan. Or the ambulance. The first step has been carried out, Master. Professor Yan has received the injection. Only part of it, Karamana. Send a loader to me. Karamana. A woman is eternally unpredictable and can upset the best laid plans. As witness a woman called Eve. Yes, my lord. If there is any weakness in my plan, it is because I have made use of a woman. You sent for me, doctor. Sir, Dennis Nayland Smith has had Professor Yan sent to the receiving hospital. See to it that he does not uh, recover from the effects of the injection he received. Yes, my lord. How is he? No change. I've arranged for a police guard to be with him at all times. Good. How are you feeling, Betty? As though every thought in my mind had been probed. And still nothing that helps. I'm terribly sorry. Now, don't be. You weren't responsible. Any report on the serum? The results of the first run might be in the lab. Let's check on it. It appears to be a protean parallelic pipette with a definite porphyrin ring. Sounds like hemoglobin, but it isn't. Of course, the report isn't complete. Well, keep on working on it. And Petrie, some psychiatry might bring out the data hidden in Miss Leonard's subconscious. You might have a try at it. I will, sir. Petrie, is there any way that... 
Professor Yan. Get to the priest quickly. You have done well, Loda. Now go back to the hospital. See to it that no one completes an analysis of the serum used on Professor Yan. Karamana, we are now ready for the Conference of Nations. Two thousand years ago, Plato said that virtue could not be taught. It could only be demonstrated. Dedicated to the principle that people who trust one another cannot fear one another. Final plans are being made for the Conference of Nations with representatives from many countries to be convened in America for the sole purpose of promoting international cooperation. While we are awaiting the arrival of Professor Hugh Young, it might be well to discuss briefly what can be offered to the full conference. The United States has proposed to share the Rutledge Radiation Shield with all member nations provided that they, in exchange, will pool their own country's secret industrial knowledge for the common good of all mankind. This will result in nuclear reactors that will run machinery and help grow crops to feed the hungry people of the world. Once this has been accomplished, it will be impossible for any group to convince the masses that there is a need for war. Therefore, I cannot stress too greatly the importance of mutual trust and cooperation, especially by the members of this planning committee. In that regard, Mr. Chairman, I would like to report an incident which took place this morning. Chair recognizes the delegate from South America. I received a phone call warning me that one of the nations represented here had made plans to keep the Far Eastern delegate, uh, Professor Hugh Yan, from attending this conference. Did your informant name any particular nation? No. He just warned that we should all be on our guard. In other words, an attempt was made to cast suspicion on all nations. There has been an attempt to keep Professor Yan from attending this conference, but it was not at the instigation of any one nation. It was by a secret society dedicated to the downfall and destruction of everything that this conference stands for. You... And the man who heads this group is capable of unbelievable acts of wickedness. You sound as if you were speaking of the devil himself. I might as well be. Gentlemen, we are facing an enemy as old as time itself. His goal is chaos. His name, Fu Manchu. The man is crazy. <laughs> I'm giving you the facts, gentlemen. Fu Manchu is out to destroy this conference. He is determined to provoke a nuclear war between the East and West and millions of innocent people will be killed. You can prove your extraordinary statement, Sir Dennis? That telephone call that Mr. Valeria received this morning, sowing seeds of doubt and suspicion, is a stratagem typical of Dr. Fu Manchu. And then there is the disappearance of Professor Yan. Where is Professor Yan? I don't know. He was spirited away by agents of Fu Manchu not more than half an hour ago. Yeah. Sorry to be late, gentlemen. You see, I was able to make it after all. The last time I saw you, Professor Yan, you were in a coma. You were also under medical care and police protection in the receiving hospital. An attempt was made to poison me when I arrived at the airport. I agreed to submit to an inoculation and lost consciousness almost immediately the serum was injected. I have not yet completely recovered from the effects of the drug. One side of my body, my face, and this hand are partially paralyzed. I recovered consciousness in the hospital but continued to pretend coma. I wanted to find out what was going on. Oh, what I overheard was enough to make me realize 
I was deliberately being kept from attending this conference. But what about the priest guard who was there to protect you? Do you know who killed him? Oh, if he is dead, I'm sorry, but I know nothing of his murder. I waited until the room was clear of people, then got out of bed, dressed, and came here. This is quite if there has been a plot against Professor Hugh Young, we must know about it. This entire matter must be investigated at once. Nothing would suit me better. Uh, one moment, gentlemen. Would it be wise to launch an investigation and let the public know of this incident? Well, if some nation is trying to sabotage the conference, the whole world should know about it. But what then? What of this job we have to do here? He's right. News like this would end this conference before it got started. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. We will still sit together at this table, but we will be on guard against treachery. We will not be so foolish as to trust one another blindly. In an atmosphere of mutual distrust and suspicion, nothing can be attained by this conference. I find it easier to accept Professor Yen's uh, account and advice than swallow Sir Denny's story about the mysterious Dr. Fu Manchu. Laboratory. Tests. Hypodermic. Serum. Cigarette. Match. Serum. Purse. Injection. Ampule. Ampule. Fu Manchu. Why did you say that? I don't know. Try to remember. Dr. Fu Manchu. What? It's like a dream that's been forgotten. That... John, I'm scared. We'll let her rest. Take it easy, Betty. You know, in my years of matching wits with that devil, I've come to know how he operates. Take that serum Yan was given. Who else but Fu Manchu could produce a poison of such an unfamiliar pattern? And he's a past master of every hypnotic trick in the book. I just left Professor Yan at the Conference of Nations. What? Yes, he was spirited out of this building and revived. He's obviously following Fu Manchu's instructions. You mean he was hypnotized, like I was? No, no, I doubt if that's it. Well, what else could it be but a hypnosis? It's impossible to make a hypnotized subject commit acts contrary to his basic moral code. Professor Yan is known to be a fine, idealistic, and honorable man. Well, right now, your fine and honorable man is destroying the Conference of Nations. At uh, the next meeting of the conference, Professor Rutledge will demonstrate a model of his radiation shield. It will be a simple matter for you to leave with it in your possession. The others will make no attempt to stop you. They will all be dead. I understand. You know the penalty of failure. There will be none. Call. It has been reported to me that Dr. Petrie is making repeated efforts uh, to probe the subconscious mind of the girl, uh, Betty Leonard. We have no longer any need for her. Inform Loda she is to be destroyed. Police say it is impossible for Professor Yan to be taken from this building without being seen. And Petrie, when things seem impossible, it's an indication that there's a false assumption somewhere. What is it? Can you leave these tests long enough to come with me? Well, sure, Betty can run them. I'll tell Loder to help her. What's on your mind? They're going to comb this building from top to bottom. Come on, let's hurry. Petrie wants a spectrum analysis of the residue in bottles A and B. 
Will you get the equipment ready for me, please? Mr. Loader. sheathing of the container. Also that uh, one side is removable. In a moment we will expose the counter to the radioactive isotope inside. But, but isn't there oh. problem? No, there will be there will be no danger, gentlemen, providing you stay where you are. I want you to observe the effect on the counter. Now, um, the Rutledge radiation shield is, well, it's somewhat like a fast rally in a tennis match. A good player will return the ball, no matter to what part of the court it is put. Well, it is merely a question of having the racket in the right place at the right time. It is... Light, durable, and easily manufactured. Now, what you see here has the shielding equivalent of many inches of solid lead. A remarkable demonstration. Why, that means that atomic energy can be made safe for use to anyone. It means atomic motors in cars, airplanes. With this device, even a backward nation could become prosperous and strong. That is why the United States wants all free nations to have the shield. In the hands of one nation, it could be used for war. But shared by all, it can provide the means of establishing a solid foundation for peace. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Sir Dennis. That man is not Professor Hugh Yan. He is an imposter. Oh, the man's insane. Serious charge, sir. I'm well aware of it, sir. If he had any proof at all to back his charge, the police would be here to arrest me. They're on their way over now. I came on ahead. Dr. Petrie and I just found the real Professor Yan where Fu Manchu's agents had left him to die. In a storeroom in the basement of the hospital. I'm glad to say that we got there in time. This is very difficult to believe. I have known Professor Yan for many years. Have you seen him since he was confined in a concentration camp? This man's paralysis is an act to cover up any differences of speech and appearance that might be noticed by anyone like you who knew the real Professor Yan. I can't understand what possesses Sir Dennis to say what he does. But I'm perfectly willing to remain here until the proper authorities arrive. By that time, we may all be dead. <laughs> And he claims to be paralyzed. Again. Professor Yan. Yeah. Professor Yan. Yeah. Oh, yes. 
Yes, it's so good to see you after all these years. Let me shake you.